Hello, everyone. Thanks for watching France Van Cat. I'm Jeannie Godula, and this is Culture. We'll start today's show with a stunning exhibition that's on now at the Arab World Institute here in Paris. It's called The Arts of Islam. The show features close to 500 rare artworks, everything from illuminated manuscripts and Qurans to ceramics, jewels, and gorgeous woven textiles. And my guest today is the show's curator, Eric Delpont. Hello, thanks for being Hello. here with us today. You're so, welcome. all the pieces in the exhibit are from the collection of one man uh, yes. named David Khalili. Tell, tell us about him and his passion for this art. Well, David Khalili is an Iranian and a Jew also, and he started collecting uh, Islamic art in the 1970s, and now he has uh, collected uh, a great many pieces, uh, among them many astonishing pieces such as uh, rare manuscripts or ceramics or metalwork or glasses. And uh, each uh, Islamic art collection is more than 20,000 uh, objects by now. And it's a fantastic collection uh, we, which is very exhaustive and uh, very representative of Islamic art in private hands. And uh, Mr. Khalili has not yet the possibility to show in a permanent uh, way his collection, so uh, he had the idea of a uh, traveling exhibition, and the selection we show at the Institute uh, was first uh, shown in Abu Dhabi and Sydney in Australia. And this is the first time it's being shown here in Europe? Yes. And uh, this is why the Institute is quite proud to receive such a collection. I find it interesting that a man who's Jewish has taken such a great interest in Islamic art. Uh, is the driving force behind his collection trying to prove that there aren't so many differences between cultures and faiths? Yes, definitely. And uh, his aim would be that uh, through art, uh, the, the two communities might, uh, re, uh, might find a, a way of talking, uh, a, 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 a way of uh, uh, listening to each other mm -hmm. also. Getting to know each other a bit better. Yes. Well, let's talk a bit about this exhibit. Uh, right at the beginning, we see some of the cloths that have covered the Kaaba over the years. Now, yes. just to explain, the Kaaba, of course, is that giant black bo block you find in the middle of mm -hmm. Mecca, one of the most sacred sites in Islam. Uh, tell us about these, these giant cloths and, and what kind of uh, what, what effect that gives us when we walk into the exhibit for the well, first time. Well, actually, we wanted to start the exhibition with the presentation of the holy places of Islam, and uh, not start with the Quran, which might be a bit harsh for. Uh, Western visitors and uh, these pieces of clothes are so impressive that when you get inside the exhibition you have a shock when entering and it gives you also the idea of the greatness of the Kaaba because uh, in the West uh, we, also, we always uh, see uh, images from the Kaaba from above and we don't realize the height uh, uh, of this building which is uh, nearly 15 meters high and the cross we, we start uh, the exhibition with is uh, very impressive uh, and this is always a very good example of the textile and embroidery with uh, golden and silver thread. Now, you mentioned the Qurans as well, and of course we do see them in the exhibit. Uh, uh, the Qurans a book that was copied manually through the centuries. But what I find interesting at the exhibit is we discover that they're not all limited just to one country, not one civilization. Well, the idea, and uh, this is what the Khalili collection allows, is to uh, show the diversity of Islamic art. And concerning the Quran, he has many uh, examples representative of, of everything which has been done through the years and, uh, and through the centuries and through the space in Islam. And even today, Quran is still uh, handwritten because this is a pious action to do it. And, uh, and he, he has many rare examples. For instance, we, we can mention uh, a Quran which was uh, copied in Sicily, and uh, there are very just few other pieces known in the world. Now, uh, uh, it's interesting because there's not just religious art in this exhibit. Uh, while we might think of Islamic art as only being religious, we also find a lot of everyday objects as well. Well, this is what we wanted to underline in this exhibition, that Islamic art is not, only a, it's not just religious art, but it, it also covers uh, all the fields of the daily life. And uh, many objects are, have been uh, elaborated to satisfy the, uh, the daily pleasures of men and women too. We see some beautiful jewels as well. Of course, and uh, uh, Islam is very uh, reputed for the, uh, for the attention uh, in jewelry 
because as the territory was very extended so that, that they could afford to have gold and precious metals and also precious stones to uh, make uh, specific uh, jewelry. What kind of reaction have you gotten to this exhibit so far? Well, the, the visitors are very surprised because uh, they see an image of Islam which they did not expect. And I, I think this is the, the, the main purpose of the exhibition, to give another image of Islam. Uh, because, uh, you know, in the West, when you, are, when you say Islam, immediately people think of religious and, for, uh, and uh, what is forbidden. But in the exhibition, we see uh, the, a more human Islam. Do you feel that Islamic art is misunderstood? Oh, definitely, yes. And uh, I, I think this is also the case why the uh, Musée du Louvre uh, is now building a new department for his, uh, Islamic collection to, uh, to, to just make understand that this civilization created many, many things during the centuries. And, uh, that, uh, the, and these things are still well, uh, well unknown uh, to many people. All right. Well, thank you so much, Eric Delfon, for coming in and talking to us about this You're beautiful welcome. exhibit, The Arts of Islam. It's on now at the Institut du Monde Arabe, or the Arab World Institute in Paris, and that's until March 14th.